This is my tea stormy enclosure that I have set up today. It is a 36 by 18 by 12 Exoterra large low. So this is all ready for her to go in. I've added some touches like moss that's kind of hanging down in places to make it look like it's been growing for a while. It's just those little things I think make it look a little more natural. Um, the leaves are a little dirty. I try to make, not make things too perfect. Make things look like, you know, they, that's how they fell. They just happened to be there. So, um, I think this is going to be great for getting photographs of her. And I think she's going to be happy. So this here is going to be the enclosure for this big girl who has a lot more growing to do. This is a 36 by 18 um, by 12. It's a low exoterra. I am going to probably just take this plant out. I have a very big water bowl here for her. I mean, you see that's my hand. Um, she could take a bath in there if she wanted to. And you know, it's a couple inches deep because uh, tea stormies are known to drink a lot of water and they love humidity. So it's very important to keep that um, filled in so that she always has access to water. So I am gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start setting this up. And I will show you what I have as I go along. I do have a hood that I'm going to put on the top. It's a miniature hood with a light that is meant for uh, plants. I have this Terraflora from the Bio Dude, handcrafted bioactive substrate for rainforest dwelling reptiles and amphibians. Um, it will uh, maintain some water and also it'll help the plants. So I'm going to mix that in with the substrate that she already has here. I want to make sure that her plants are off to a good start. And I wanna make sure that the springtails and isopods that I put in here will have substrate that's good for them. I have been wetting this substrate down. It's mostly just cocoa fiber at this point. Keeping it wet, preparing it for her. I think this, this rainforest substrate looks like it has some, looks like it has charcoal in it. I added a piece of bamboo, some kind of bamboo root maybe, um, a big piece of cork bark. I have these leaves, they're from Pangaea, Pangaea. And then I have some, I have four plants in here, actually, yeah, four plants, I divided one of them. And you can see that I, I took the plant and, you know, kind of pulled it through this seed pod to make it look more natural, like it had been growing there. I'm gonna add springtails and um, isopods to this setup as well and get her water dish in here. And these are all just uh, seed pods you can get from the Bio Dude. And this is a big, I think it's called a monkey pod. Uh, these are all, you know, biodegradable. The creatures will eat on them while they're in here, so. They'll slowly degrade over time, provide a food source, and keep the environment healthy. I wanted um, a deep water dish that was really accessible, so I'm putting it near this opening. Hopefully she'll be in her hide over here. Go to change her water. I'm gonna fill up her water dish. She will have lots of water and give these plants a little bit of water as well. It's kind of hard to water in there because this exoterra is so low, which is why I chose it. I do not want this girl to fall and hurt herself, so I wanted it to be a low cage. This is one of my um, <clears throat> isopod setups. It actually doesn't even have a secure lid because I don't really worry about them getting out. But in here I have Dalmatians and there are lots of babies. 
I bury things in here sometimes, like if a roach dies. Um, so you can see, you can see all these babies down here. So I'm just gonna grab a whole handful here and transfer them into the substrate in the new enclosure. So you can see all of these isopods starting to spread out over here. And there's probably some springtails in with those as well. These are all the babies that we're feeding on some potato. Probably some dwarf whites in there as well. They're kind of mixed in together. If you mix your Dalmatians and your dwarf whites when they're babies, it'll be really hard to tell if <laughs> who you have. So that was my, my, I guess you could call it a mistake, was mixing them together because when they're babies, I honestly don't know. So now they have a lot of wood, they have leaves, they can feed on, um, spread out and get rid of some of the, the uh, bolus that are left around here and just have a real nice bioactive setup especially since uh, Sturmies like it wetter. Um, of course, you don't want it to be too wet, but it's going to stay moist and high high humidity in here. Right now, the humidity gauge, um, it was just something I got for free, so I stuck it in here for fun, but uh, it's, it's only at about 30%. And this has been wetted down quite a bit, but I'll continue to wet it down some more might need to actually put a cover on here, uh, cover up part of this, um, I think it's steel mesh. I might need to cut up a few acrylic pieces to try and um, keep the humidity a little higher. So this is a pretty big enclosure. Let me zoom in on those isopods. There they are, there's quite a few. They just kind of sprang up underneath that slice of potato that I had buried. And they're pretty easy to care for. Just, uh, I just give them some leftover foods, vegetables. I give them, like, if I find a dead roach, like I said, or something, I just put that in there. I keep their substrate a little bit moist, and the rest is history. Now, the light that I have in here is a natural light. It's from Exoterra and it's 26 watts. It is not a heat lamp, so it stimulates um, plant growth and it's a full spectrum daylight light. Um, it tends to get pretty dark in this room, but she has a lot of shady places she can hide out. I'm also gonna add some of this leaf litter in here. Just crumbling it up, some more detritus. This is also from um, the bio, biodude.com, uh, biodegradables, um, so it's a, an organic nutrition source. Makes the enclosure look a little bit more lived in. And a lot of the creatures like the uh, isopods will eat it. gives them something to nibble on and helps with the breakdown of organic material. Just the whole idea is to have this enclosure be able to clean itself. That way we can keep it humid enough without having a lot of problems with mold. Keep the plants fertilized as well because we're not going to be using any kind of chemicals in here. All these plants were sold as reptile and invert safe. And I've been using these plants for a while and they're, they are safe. I can vouch for that. I get them from Holly's Reptiles. That's where I got most of what's in here. It's our local store here in Spokane that has really cool things for your creatures. Alright, now that looks a little, a little better. I'm trying to make it look a little more like it's been here for a while. Make her feel like she is at home. 
Another thing I have that I can add in here is some of this uh, sheet moss. Um, this one is Galapagos Products um, sheet moss. So I, I can add a little bit of, of this in there as well. I did add some to my Pisolitharia enclosure and the first night after I had it in there when I was testing it out, there was this kind of like sheen of this moldy looking stuff on it. And I just wiped my hand over it and it went away and I added some, you know, some isopods and springtails and I haven't seen it since. So I don't think it was anything important. I'm going to add some of this moss around the water dish probably a place where you know there's going to be some moisture more moisture maybe also gives the critters a place to hide near the water I noticed the springtails and the isopods really like to be around the water bowl so gives them somewhere to feel safe and another good place that I like is around the base of some of the plants seems like in the nature that's where moss grows too on trees, on bases of plants, it help, helps hold the moisture in. I got my, my beautiful curly hair boy over there in his tank. You might be able to see him crawling around. He's a mature male, which makes me sad because he's so sweet. His name is L'Elephant. And the reason his name is L'Elephant is because one day he was monkeying around in his, in his enclosure and I went to feed him and he did this really funny little, I don't know what you'd call it, a jig or a stance and he totally reminded me of a baby elephant playing around in that moment and it just stuck with me that his name had to be something to do with elephant. And I'd seen that funny look, that funny face of a wise cracking baby elephant before and I thought that's you, who you are which most of my tarantulas don't have names um, they usually get their names by you know the way they behave so you see them do something and they get they get named or it just comes to me what about you do you name your tarantulas I guess there are many different circumstances where it would depend why you would name them or why you wouldn't. I don't think there's anything wrong with it either way. Looking pretty good, I must say. And it'll look probably better after things grow a little bit and start to look a little bit lived in. I'm just gonna put some like finishing touches around things that might make it look a little more natural like it's been here for a bit so i'm going to turn the camera off while i do that i'm going to show you inside of her burrow Let's see how close we can get you can see inside there goes back pretty far one of the things i wanted to make sure was there was nothing she was going to rub on um, that could hurt her at all, so that was a concern. So I wanted to make sure this was tall enough. So she's in this bin, and I put her in here straight from the box, as you may have seen. In either I'll put it in another video, or it's in this video. So now I need to get her out of this box and into the Exoterra. I don't think it's a wise idea to take this box and put it in there and try to get her out because she's bolty. So I'm going to try to get her into a catch cup and then put the catch cup into her enclosure.